listening to The Sizzle on Iron Skillet Radio and Iron Skillet Television. Don't know how accurate that was, but you know, that could that could have been Johnny Walker Black Label talking right there, too. It know? could have been. It could have been. It, it's kind of like watching a uh, Bulls playoff game where it's just oh, good God. It's like yeah. you're just laying out in the park drunk off that Johnny and just I, <laughs> look, man. Oh, gee, gee. I mean, since you had to bring up the horrible, how do the Bulls not win that game? I, they actively gave away game one. They actively said the last 10 minutes of this game, we are going to concertedly, we're going to give away this game to the Bucks and let you take it home. with you. And it was sealed by the great Johnny Walker play of Zach yeah. Levine when you had enough time on the clock, set up, get a play, run your you run your offense, get something yeah. going, and then everybody in the building knew once he got that ball, he was going to take a fifty five footer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! His inner Steph Curry jumped into his body, <sighs> and he he just went on to put on his number thirty jersey and let it fly. <laughs> Did you ever get 97 uh, three-pointers in a row? Did you ever do that? I don't know why you chucking that up from nearly the logo. Look, the Bucks gave them this game on a silver platter. The Bulls were plus 10 in turnovers. The Bucks, 21 turnovers. They were giving the – every time the Bulls were running down – every time the Bucks were running down the court, they just handed the Bulls the basketball. Here you go. Here you go. It was ridiculous. I just they, the Bulls let them in steals. You know they were even in assists. It was one of these games. It was there for you to win, and you just decided you figured out. Right, we don't need this first game. <laughs> we'll be okay. You know, can we stop two things? Two misnomers. Yeah. Yeah. Number one, the first misnomer is that Zach Levine is a clutch player. Let, let's stop well, we never that said he now. Was yeah, we, never now said we he was haven't clutch. said it, but there's this pervasive thought that Zach Levine somehow, somewhere is clutch. That's number one. Yeah. yeah. And the next thing is, can we stop thinking that the Bulls have now any shot? Because if you had one shot, just a shot out the dark, you have to take game one. You have to go to Milwaukee. You have to take game one. But now everyone's talking about, well, it's so much that the Bulls learn. They learned how to really get their offense and their defense together so they'll be ready for game two. Well, guess what? The Bucks learned something, too. Oh, yeah. that's right. We were playing with them and almost lost that game. So, okay, games two, games three, games four. Let's just go in here and go to work because we put them away early, put the baby to sleep early, and now we can go on about our day, get a little rest for the next one. Because right now, I saw the Bulls go, that's what they did. They went, the whole game. Well, here, here was the whole issue with them. You had the Bucks ready to lose. Mm -hmm. They were shooting terrible from the free throw line. Terrible. Mm -hmm. They were well under 70% from the line. But as the Chicago Bulls always do, until they figure out how to stop going down double digits by the end of the first quarter, they stop getting nuclear bombed, you might have a chance. Because actually in the second and third, they played well. They were winning those quarters. They closed the game down. They just couldn't close the game. Why can't they do that? Because you're always fighting uphill. Mm -hmm. Did you know, you know... The Bulls are one of these teams, and, and Lonzo Ball just can't be the missing X factor. Huh. He no. is. He, he, he's a big piece of this, but he, mm -hmm. he's, he can't be the missing X factor. Oh, he is. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we got to, you know, it, you said it once before, is Vucevic playing at a high enough level mm -hmm. for him to be effective? Now, I did look up this stat. You know, he was number five in the NBA in rebounds. Mm -hmm. You know, he's getting boards. But the problem is, is he getting them when they need them? Because you never really think about him as a rebounder. 
Right. You never really think about him, a guy who's going to go to him in the clutch. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't you don't have he's, he's not in B like where you're going to toss the ball into him because you know you're going to go get a bucket. You know, um, I don't know. This, this, this Wolves team, man, is very aggravating. But this was this was the one time they had an opportunity to take this game. Now, would it have mattered? Are they going to beat the Bucks in the series? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. You know, absolutely not. They're they're not going to beat the Bucks in the series. But is there any such thing as a moral victory? You know, it, it, it's at least winning one game because I don't think they're going to win one now. I think it's over. I think it's over. Done with. I think we'll bring the broom out. Well, if it I'll, is a moral victory, it's a moral victory for the Bucks. It's not for the Bulls. You know, think about the Bucks. The Bucks are expected to win, though. Mm-hmm. You know, and then if it's close, Giannis is not going to let him lose. He's that guy. He, mm-hmm. I literally think he smacks everybody up in the locker room. I really, he, I think he's that guy. We will not to lose. It just starts cracking people. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> he just pulls his brother out in the middle of the floor, slaps him upside the head. He said, "This will happen to all of you." If we lose. Yeah, if we lose. Because I, I was selling pencils on the street in Greece, dreaming of this moment. Me and my brother, that's why we're all in the league, we smack up every locker room we get to. Yeah, they do. Because he, like, he looks like that guy. And man, shout out to everybody that played in the Sizzles Fantasy Basketball League. Just yeah. as a reminder, man, it was a great time. We had a great season. We had, like, millions of teams. I can't even tell you how many teams we had, but. That's a lot of, that's a lot of teams. I tell you what, people who had Vooch had a steal because you had a leader in rebounds and shots the whole season. He's yeah. giving you guaranteed double doubles, but there's no production from anyone else. So, Jay, I'm going to ask you again. I'll just yeah. say it. I'm not going to ask it. Yes, sir. At this point, Zach Levine is who's going to bring me back a best haul. I'm dumping Zach Levine next season. Oh, but what you gonna get for Zach? Because everybody's watching the same thing. And, and here's the thing. Here's but but are, well, here's the problem though. Are you going to get the same output from DeRozan? No, because if if you I if you no, if, if, if I have no 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 if you if you dump if you dump Levine, you're saying DeRozan is going to be this guy again. If I keep Levine. I've seen that story before. I saw it before DeRozan got here. See, here's the problem. This is all, it's all smoke and mirrors with the Bulls, and that's what's aggravating. That's what Shaquille O'Neal said at the beginning of the season, and everybody poo-pooed what Shaq said. It's all smoke and mirrors with the Bulls because you've got a gimpy Lonzo Ball, which was why there was a reason that New Orleans said, go ahead, take him with you because they had already assessed that he was not going to be the man that's going to stay durable long enough. Yeah. I don't but, even think Lonzo Ball is going to have a long NBA career. I doubt. But it. you but the problem is is that if if you you got Levine at 26 years old. All right. That's the one thing that gives him stability. Is that a is that a word? Because it doesn't make you stable even if he stays You've seen what happens with what he can't lead a team. And now going back to the comment and the commentary years ago, even when he got to the Olympics, he is not an alpha dog when it comes to, to the team. He's a no. good complimentary piece. He's a great like third option. He's like a, a younger, better looking J.R. Smith. Wow. That? Wow. I don't think J.R. Smith would like that a comparison, sir. Oh, okay. Hey, J- J.R. Smith, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Mm-hmm. J.R. Smith is a bucket, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was, J.R. He Smith, was when he a had bucket. a rolling. Zach is he, a he, bucket when he's with two other people who can get buckets. I mean, I'm not saying it like J.R. Smith is a scrub. They, in fact, it's a compliment to both of them. Because I don't think J.R. Smith, even though J.R. Smith has a ring, I don't think he ever accomplished what Zach Levine has accomplished. And Zach Levine no. well, has uh, never been to the playoffs. And so you look at that, you look at Alonzo Ball, who's 24. I mean, okay. let's break this down a little bit. Okay. Uh, Alex Caruso, we're not going, we're not going to count Alex Caruso, no. even though, you know, we're not going to say he was anything uh, 
it's central to the Bulls, even though he's central to this Bulls team. Mm -hmm. Alex Caruso is not the reason that you're going to win any type of championship. He's a gun for hire. You look right. You're looking at Demar Rosen, who's 32. So you know he. We're waiting. He he's old timer. It's he may he have three more good yeah. years in. Him. He might have. Javante Green is 20. Is 28. Oh my God, right. he's almost 30. He's almost 30. I was surprised when I saw that. By well, guess off. what? He's like Lonzo Ball. He's a gun for hire. Let's right, and then after, and then after that, Vucevic is thirty-one, and then your favorite, not my favorite, Patrick Williams is twenty. So the question is: Are you putting on that? My that's my question right there. Is is that Patrick Williams fella? It's not my question because I've seen enough of it. I've that, seen that, enough, <laughs> and I know again, like Shaq said, this is smoke and mirrors. This all this oh Patrick Williams is gonna develop man you just he's a stopper he's the guy that you're gonna put up yeah okay. yeah. yeah did yeah. you see the uh did you see Giannis go up the man's back sit on his neck twist yeah. his braids again and shoot the shot yeah 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 it's just bad. so you you got you got a bunch of guys right now not there's not one of these guys on the roster right now that you're going to say gotta have. I and mean, that it's, would it's it, Zach Levine. Yeah, and and but the only thing I'm saying is I don't think they're moving Zach Levine. I think Lonzo Ball is going to end up staying. I think Dasumu has played well enough to keep to keep rostering. I don't think. I don't, see, here's the problem with him. I don't think Al is good enough to start in the league, but he's good enough to come off the bench in the league. I you know what I'm that. saying? I think. I yeah, and so he's I think a good off guard bench player. Yeah. You know, Right, so I think this is a guy who's been playing. He, he, and so I think he sticks. So if you after that, it's like okay. I mean, there's there's nothing on here that there's anybody on here that you're going wow. This is a team. These are guys you got to keep. Kobe White, you know, no. Desumo. When you get to IO, it my thought would be you've got to focus on him being a better defender next year. Don't even worry about scoring. Defend. Be a better defender. I don't defender. know if he's capable. I don't know if he's don't capable know. of being a better defender. Because being a capable defender really means selling out and, and, and selling out and putting your body on the line. That's what it really – and I, I don't think he – not to not say he's not a tough guy. Don't get me wrong when I'm saying what I'm saying. I mm -hmm. think he's a guy who's who believes his offensive game is what's going to keep him in the league. And when you have offensive-minded guys, they take off on the defensive end a little bit. They really don't get up in here and fight on the defensive end. They don't Alex Caruso you on the defensive end where they're going to get all up in you. This is the reason why, and I know going off topic just shortly, but this is the reason why you see a Boston Celtics team literally get up underneath uh, the Brooklyn Nets and just deny them the basketball. Mm -hmm. Because they they were just mentally they said we're going to be a tough defensive team and they got people up underneath other players uh, jerseys and playing them in tight. The Bulls don't play that type of defense. Okay, you let's know, they, look at what you said. Let's look at the two things that the Boston Celtics did last year. What were the two yeah. things they did, Jay? Number one, they got rid of short people. Pritchard, yeah. all those little guards, all those little tiny guards they had. They got rid of all the little people. They got even little, got rid of little bigs, the six, yeah. eight, the six, seven swings who were playing. So they got tall front line. If you look at their front line right now with Williams, you know, you can put in there as you go with anybody they have on their front line, they're huge. Even Marcus right. Smart, he's thick. I mean, he may not be the tallest, but he's strong. And then they did exactly what you said. The second part and the key to it was they got defenders. They sold out. Their bench is full of them. They're sprinkled all over the place. You have mad defenders all over the place. Everybody on that team is a capable defender, yeah. but they got tall players. Uh, Chicago Bulls, they let DeMarcus Cousins sit out there. When I mean, you could have brought him in as a backup, give Vooch a spell. They got tall players. When you had a chance to go get Thaddeus Young back, you didn't, and you brought in Tristan Thompson. They got tall players. And when you had a chance to get rid of Kobe White, 
you didn't, and now you left with a miniature poor man's version of, of Ben Gordon, and they got defenders. The Bulls yeah. have one true defender on their team, and that's Alex Caruso. And he's not even – he's not a core player, to your point, Jay. He's a hired gun. He's the dude right. you bring in as a finisher. I could see Caruso on the Bucks. I could see him on the Celtics. I could see him now playing with, well, not so much with Boston. I mean with uh, Brooklyn. But I could see Caruso being that dude. I could see Caruso being in Golden State as a rotational player. I can see him anywhere, really, except Chicago. Because he is the one, he's the prototype of what you want, but you don't have. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 the problem is no. Give, give the Bull staff kudos for bringing together a team that was at least um, watchable mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. I think they got off running early, and we said, "Woohoo! Look at us! We're going! We're going to win the champ! We're going to win the chip!" But I have been saying uh, all year long that this team was not that good. And people were like poo pooing on me and, you know, sending me all types of flim flar and flar and flar in the comments. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say, mm -hmm. I did not say that they were not uh, a team that's going to compete. Right. I just said they weren't that good. And they weren't what their record showed they were. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this wasn't a Dennis Green. And right now, you see, they, they are seven or eight points short of what they need to be. Right. You know, they're, they're seven or eight points short. And, they, and they, they need somebody to come in and lock down these boards. They need somebody. They need they, Rudy Gobert. Would you like to have Rudy Gobert back there? Hey. A um, vendor? Can I get Rudy Gobert? I mean, is, is he available right now? No, we we – we don't know, but I think at one point in time he was. We, oui, we, oui. you know, and you and you have to find out. You have to find out at some point in time. You got to go and say, "Can I play defense?" Okay, let me ask you this. Yeah, since we're talking about it, we have a listing. I have a listing of some things I, I've heard people talk about it. I've heard people send me information about it. Mm -hmm. um, Chicago Bulls talk. They talk about it a lot. They have seven points, if I may read them to you, sure. of what the Bulls need in the offseason. Okay. This is how bad this is. We've already moved to the offseason. We said, okay, nice conditioning, so let's move to the offseason. Number one, get Lonzo Ball, Levine, knees healthy. Okay? Number two, resign Levine. Number three, See if any star trades are available. Number four, acquire tall defensive big man anchor. Number five, acquire a power forward who can shoot and defend. Number six, add a three and D wing. And number seven, retool the bench with shooters and defenders. Well, let's let's just start with saying. Hell, get a whole new team. Buy yeah. another team. Buy the yeah. buy Boston and make them the Chicago Boston Celtics. Yeah, yeah. This isn't the Boston Celtics. They, okay, this is an illogical list because yes, if you could do all of that, then the Bulls are winning a championship. If they yeah. can get a tall defender, number one, Vooch is your center. So unless you're telling me that you're trading Vooch and another player, maybe like Patrick Williams to Utah to bring in a Rudy Gobert. That's the only way it's going to happen. Oh, and by the way, you're going to have to attach a first-round pick to that, too. Maybe uh, multiple first-round picks. And, and here's the problem. When you're trying to retool from the bottom and you can't grow within your own organization because you make bad picks, mm -hmm. a la a certain guy who still keeps wearing those leprechauns, uh, when you make bad picks, this sets your franchise back. When you when 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 you don't make picks, they're going to make any sense. Kobe White pick, why? Unless he's a super scorer, are you getting a small guard like that? Mm -hmm. Unless he's Allen Iverson like, unless he's Ja Morant like, unless he's a guy like that who's going to give you instant offense, 
which Kobe White will give you instant offense, but it's not continual instant offense. Mm -hmm. It's like one of these, he's, he's like one of these third world countries that they have lights on every second day. You know what I'm saying? Every second day, everything's working. Your iPad's working. Everything's working. But as soon as all the lights go off, if you didn't charge your iPad up, you're dead for 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And that's what you get with Kobe White. He comes in there and, and he'll give you a good run or he'll give you a good quarter, but it's not consistent enough where you can leave him on the floor at, at crunch time. This is the problem with the Bulls. You got a lot of role players, but you got a lot of role players starting for the Bulls. You know what I'm saying? And you got guys later on in their time. Look, we got lucky with DeRozan. Lucky. We did see a problem now that we have. We have two guys out here who have consistent leg problems, and that's in Lonzo Ball and Zach Levine. Now, is it their style of play? These are two big explosive guys who explode. Their game makes an explosion. So now you got to wonder now, can they hold up in long NBA seasons? When you have guys like that who are super explosive, this is the reason why Carmelo Anthony and guys like that are able to play well late into their 30s. You see LeBron be explosive, but not explosive all the time. He plays the old man game right now. He plays, he plays situational, explosive times. LeBron is not exploding every time I'm on the floor. He's coming down trying to get to his spot, make a move, and, and sh he shoots more fadeaways. He reminds me now of Michael Jordan when Michael Jordan got into his vintage years. Mm -hmm. You know, where he developed a fadeaway, and that he developed the fadeaway. that turnaround fade that he could get off on a regular basis, shoot a pretty high percentage, and because two points on a on a on a 16, 17 foot jump shot still counts the same as a dunk. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just, mini game, you know. I'm wondering with you saying that. And one of the young men we watch, if you looked at the tournament this year, we watch Jay Knight. You watch baby John ja Moran. Maybe not yeah. as polished yet, maybe not as good of a worker. But my thought is, if you can package Zach Levine to one of the lower teams, would a lower team that is struggling take a Zach Levine in exchange for a young pick, which would be a young player, young pick, and package it up with some things, kind of make it work. Because at this point, my question is, just like yours, after years and now knee injuries, and Zach Levine's game has not changed. It yeah. went from now being a power game to him being some kind of weird old three-point shooter. He's not, and Jay, you can give me the stats to be specific what he is this year, but it's not mm -hmm. like we're saying Zach Levine is a 40 42% three-point shooter. He's not dead-eye. He's not that dude that you can throw the ball to and you know that's a bucket when he catches that ball. He's not that guy. He's not Clay Thompson. He's not a guy that I want as a shooter. And oh, by the way, DeMar DeRozan was on a team that had championship aspiration, but they didn't win a championship until they shipped away DeMar DeRozan. Absolutely. And so this is why you see a guy like that actually shine. Because he's here and now he became the alpha dog. Where this should have been Zach Levine's team. You look at the last five games Levine has played, he's logged up nearly 34 minutes playing time and averaged 20 points a game. 20 points a game averaging is not big dog status. It's just not big dog status. And if you look at what his field goal percentage, he's still shooting around 40%, 1%, you know? But that tells me that you're not taking it to the basket enough. And to your point, he's only 27% from the arc, you know, which is not good enough. You need to be shooting 30, 34, 35% to be an effective three-point shooter. You cannot go one out of four mm -hmm. out there because you're not getting enough attempts. You're not getting enough attempts in a ball game. If you're getting 12 attempts, out there, and now you're only hitting three of those 12 attempts. That's not good. Enough. Yeah, you need one, you need one for three, right? We, 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 we need, we need to shoot a higher percentage. His free throws always been good, he's always been a good free throw shooter, right? You know what I'm saying? But it gives him a walk. Here's the thing about it, right? It gives him a walk. He normally shoots up or he normally shoots in his 80s. It gives him a walk. He was shooting nearly 75% from the free throw line. 
So what is that telling you? Is that fatigue setting in when you get to the line, you can't hit your free throws? You know, it's, 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 I just don't understand um, why a um, guy like this uh, can't assert himself when he needs to. Mm. He has all the physical tools. We, we need a 30, 35 point output. We need a Kyrie Irving output on, we need that. We need, now we know, we know the Nets need both of them to win. They need, they need uh, the Slim Reaper and Kyrie to get off. But the Bulls need a double shot. DeRozan is going to give you uh, good stats in the game. This midi game is just nice. But Zach Levine at 20 points. You know, what he had, 20, he had 23 points against him. Oh, he had 23 points averaging. Games played against Milwaukee. He averaged 23 points against Milwaukee. You know, one double double. One double double. It's painful. It's painful to watch a Bulls game when you think their big three aren't even a big three. It's like a mini three. You got Luch, you got DeRozan, you got Zach. Zach's game has not changed. There has been some type of loss in Luch's game, and you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop with DeRozan. And you wow. knock on wood to say, Thank God he hasn't been injured. Like, because if he were injured, the Bulls would be right now, they'd be in the lottery. Without yeah. question. Oh, oh, they'd be, and doubt. Zach would have set out because they would have shut him down with his knee. And if your knee is that bulky and that bad, then it might be time for you to think about either augmenting your game with something new, uh, going to the gym with Damar and figure out how to get this mini game going for you. Or he would look really, really good in red and white, like in Houston. Or well, send him well, where get... he really wanted to go, send him to Sacramento. I'd take a first round Sacramento pick for him. Am I reading stat right now? I'm I'm trying to see his plus or minus for um this last game mm -hmm. was an 11, minus 11. Is that, is that when you're on the floor, your team is down? Is that what that means? Mm -hmm. Your time on the floor? Is that what your plus or minus means? Let me make sure. Because if that's the case, then we have a bigger problem. Let me, let me see. If I think I'm we have not... a major problem when it comes to Zach Levine. And nobody wants to talk about it. It's something, when you talk about it, everybody goes, oh, you know. Eh, but, you know, Zach is such a great guy. He's got a Mountain Dew commercial now. He is on the come up. He's really that guy. And you're okay, so, to say, yeah, maybe not. All right, so here it goes, right? So I'm just looking up your plus and minus, right? Which, which is exactly what I thought it was. I just wanted to be sure because I just, my mouth just dropped. Well, I just saw the stat with Zach Levine. All right. So plus or minus is how well a team did uh, against another team when that player is on the floor. All okay. right. Against uh, Sunday's game, uh, they were a minus 11 when Zach Levine was on the floor. I mean, while he was on the floor, the Bucks outplayed the Bulls by 11 points. Well, against mm -hmm. Chicago versus Charlotte, Friday 4-8. Levine was on the floor. Charlotte outplayed the Bulls. He was a minus 19 against Charlotte. When he was on the floor, Charlotte scored 19 more points than the Bulls was on the floor. 4-6, Chicago versus Boston. They lost 94 to 117. He was a minus 24. See a trend here? See anybody see a trend? Mm -hmm. Anybody see a trend? Even in their wins, the last time this shows up, even in their wins against the Clippers, he was on the floor for let's see, forty-one minutes. He was on the floor. All right, he went five for seventeen from the field. Uh, 
<laughs> shot under 30% from the field. And they were a minus, he was a minus one. Now, is he making a difference when he gets on the court? Is he making a difference? Because right now, I just ran off some stats for you for April, and there's not one stat on here that he was a positive influence for the Bulls offensively against the other team when he was playing. Maybe you're right. I'm just looking right now. I'm I'm going over the Oklahoma, the Oklahoma City roster, the Thunder roster. I'm yeah. looking at what they have available because where they stand, their numbers are horrific. But the one thing about them is that they have multiple picks mm -hmm. that they can kind of throw around and they've got things that you would need. But let me put it this way. If you could throw a Josh Giddy and maybe a Darius Baisley, um, along with probably, I would like, I would ask for uh, Pukashetsky. I do. It's, if nothing else, I like tight. <laughs> Excuse you. And maybe a, like a Kendrick Williams. You put those together, and I can ship out Zach Levine. Kobe White and Patrick Williams. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't. I think two of those three guys are still going to be here. I definitely, I definitely see Patrick Williams going to be here. They're not coming to cut bait on that. They're, they're, they're too worried that they're going to actually be wrong, and it's somehow or another he's going to pull it together and become a decent NBA player. He's going to keep pay for the next seven or eight seasons on potential. You know. Zach Levine, because he's 26 years old, he's going to be a Chicago Bull. That's what's going to happen. I'm just saying, my friend. I'm saying sell high. Buy low. Like the store, buy lows, where you can get the best market deal on the market. Yeah. Buy yeah. low. I mean, Zach Levine, you send him to OKC, you get him closer to home, you get them what they want. Box market guy who can, he's a box office guy, and you get some young players, but you get some young players who can defend. You get some young players with length. Maybe this Zach Lafine thing will work, but you got to tell me if I have my choice, Jay, between yeah. Zach Lafine and their center, Vooch, and Vooch, which one am I keeping? Well, Zach Levine has averaged 24 points a game since he's been playing for the Chicago Bulls. Okay. He's, you know, he's played, what, 250, 250 games for the Bulls? Something, it's got to be something like that. So he, he's, he's been 25 points a game for you. Now, he, he is a stat type of guy, but a lot of those, those points, a lot of time in garbage minutes. You know, he, he had a couple of What happened last year, I think this year too, he had a couple of – Big shots toward the end. They got a lot of uh, two. He hit two. He hit well, one against the Knicks, and then I think he had one against Oklahoma City. Now remember, Oklahoma City last year was the team they were molly whopping. I think by twenty, and came yeah. back and lost the game. I'm just saying to you, he's thrown up. And if everybody's crucifying Russell Westbrook for having empty calories and empty stats, then the same thing should hold and apply to Zach Levine. Zach Levine, yes, he's giving you 24 points a game since he's been with the Bulls. How many years have the Bulls been good with Zach Levine? Holy nice. smokes. Let's look at – you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the stat man now. Mm -hmm. um, but I want you to hear something that's Wait. incredible. I think we're going to get ready to drop a J-bomb. All, All right. right so let, let, let's look at Zach Levine's plus or minus. All right. Zach Levine plus or minus for the 2021-22 season was a minus 26. All right? Not bad. Not bad. But here is the incredible part. Okay. For all the time that Zach Levine has been here since 2017, mm -hmm. there has not been a season where he has been on the positive side or the plus or minus. 
the only team that he on that season he came close in was the 2020-2021 season where he was a minus nine for the entire season. So what does that tell you? Either these teams have been so terrible, which they have been terrible for him, right? But when Zach Levine's on the floor, the Bulls are still getting outscored when he's on the floor. That is the problem. And why is that, Jay? Why is it that they're getting outscored when Zach Levine's on the floor? Because he does not what? He does not play defense. He refuses to. He will not sell out. So I apologize to you, J.R. Smith, because ultimately that was disrespectful. And I'll say it. It was disrespectful to make that kind of comparison because at least – there were times you knew J.R. Smith went sober in his mind and heart and body. He would, uh, give you defense. he would give you defense and put up points on you. And by the way, he's won a ring. Let me remind you again, Zach Levine's first year in his what? Seven year career? Something like that? Yeah. 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 The best thing Zach Levine has done in his whole career is win a dunk competition Wow. Beat Jimmy Butler on the return game after they were traded for wow. each other wow. and hit wow. a three-point shot on a Knicks team that perpetually sucks. There you go, my friend. Yeah. That that's, And he made it to the All-Star game on a humbug. Let's remember, he didn't even make it to the All-Star game when the All-Star game was in his city. They pulled up in your city, in your town, yeah. playing in your building, and you weren't there. Make sure that you follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Iron Skillet Sports. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to Iron Skillet Sports on YouTube at Iron Skillet Sports.